Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas. This is how to make a driving a racing game in Unity and welcome to episode 18. So this time we're going to carry on looking at our modes that we started creating last time. Uh, we'll sort out our menu where we select which mode we want because at present we don't have the standard race mode. I will also make our menus look a little bit better than what they currently do. So we'll start with basing uh, this whole episode on the second mode that we created. And the idea is I just want to kind of allow you to keep racing around and around and around trying to set uh, a lap record and what we can do is we can kind of use the same principles what we did in this case we have mode score and I'm going to hold control press D to duplicate that and we'll get an error down here that's not to worry let's change this to mode time open up in Visual Studio and firstly we need to change the public class name here to mode time same as the script name we've just created so the idea is we need to remember what we have the mode selection as and if we go to our uh, script mode select uh, race mode 2 is the time one so if we change this look up here as this look up I'm not sure why I said look up probably because we're working with Excel today <laughs> so uh, if we change this uh, if statement here to 2 and what we're going to do here is change a couple of things. So I'm firstly going to save this script and I'm going to attach it to this object here. Now currently it's set score mode, but what I'm going to do is rename this object as mode object and drag and drop that onto the uh, object there. So mode time onto there. And the idea is we need to disable our triggers, as it were, to complete the lap. So we just want to kind of keep going. So the idea is that once we have the lap complete trigger, we go through and we get through the second trigger, which is lap complete trigger, which is just there. And then we have race finish trigger. This is the object we need to disable. <clears throat> now, to do that, we could constantly kind of monitor the whole uh, update thing and allow ourselves to prevent this from coming on every time, but it may take up a little bit of resource. In a simple race, a uh, simple game, I should say, that would probably be enough, it would suffice. But what we need to do is in race finish, if we open up that script, it uh, gets the point of void on trigger enter, but we're going to add an extra line of code here referencing the mode time. So in mode time, what we're going to do is in this section here, we're going to give an if statement, um, which is going to relate to a static variable. So I'm going to keep all these objects here for now. And I'm just going to go down a couple lines and create a new variable and have it public static uh, bool. <clears throat> and let's have, let's just call it uh, is time mode by default we'll make it false so basically if mode selection is two we're going to make uh, in fact I'll undo deleting that uh, because we'll keep a couple of lines of code we'll have is time mode equals true okay and save that script so then race finish what we need to do is after void on trigger enter we need to put in here if and in brackets mode time dot is time mode double equals true then open curly bracket and we basically put let's put an annotation in here saying we are on race time mode and then after the curly bracket, we put else, open curly bracket, and then we place all of this code inside that else statement and save. So basically, when we complete the race, we check to see are we racing uh, against the AI or are we not? <clears throat> so next thing to do is to turn off the AI car itself. And if we go back to the uh, mode time script, you can see at the moment we have race UI. Uh, we need to keep that on 
So let's disable that. Score UI by default is set off, so we don't need that at all. AI car, we do need this. We do need to turn that AI car uh, off because we're just racing ourselves. And scores object or set active, we can remove that as well because we're not doing the score. Uh, void update with the score in it, we don't actually need that at all. Now, if we go to our variables up here, if we select them, you'll see they highlight and we can see where they're used in the script. So race UI isn't used, so we can delete that one. Score UI, we can delete that one. AI car, yes, because we need to disable it here. Current score, nope, because we're, this isn't a score. Same with internal score, that can go. Score value, that can go. And score objects can indeed go. It's up to you whether you want to remove the namespace at the top of using unityengine.ui. I'll keep it there just in case. So I'm going to save that script and click on my mode object now. Just need to set the AI car. So car waypoint based onto there. And I'm going to save that script. So if we go to uh, the main menu, uh, actually track select we'll start with. So we'll go on track select, we'll press play, and we'll go to that mode now. So, yep, yeah, let's have a car, Jimmy Circuit, and we'll do time attack. So, let's see why this hasn't quite worked. So, mode object. Uh, okay, I don't think we've set that button correctly, have we? So, let's double click our canvas. Let's pan it around because it is the wrong way. So, time attack. Let's have a look. Button object. Mode tire, select mode. Okay, so let's go to button object, mode select, and race mode equals two. Okay, so let's just check we have this right. Did we bring in the race mode? Uh, mode selection equals mode select dot race mode void start. Uh, okay, so that has decided not <clears throat> to pull that one through. So let me clear the console. And let me quickly double check this. So theoretically, what should actually happen here is when we select the car, select the track. Ah, I see. So the track is bringing us straight to the race. So... That's my fault. We need to rearrange that, don't we? So we want time attack, red car, circuit. There we go. So you can see we are now in that mode where we can just race, 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 because the AI car has disappeared. So that's that mode set up ready. So next what we'll do is let's rearrange things here. Uh, let's bring our track selection down to the bottom and bring our mode select up. So let's switch them around so we go the right order of things. That'll do for now. And I'm going to take time attack, hold control, press D to duplicate, and just bring it over here. In fact, I'll bring it at the front, because that's going to be our default one, isn't it? So we'll have it there. And let's take score and time attack and just move them along to there. Obviously, you can do the same things with the buttons we've done with the cars and the tracks to make them look pretty, as it were. And we'll have race mode and let's change the text to race mode so now we just need to attach a script to this which will allow us to change to race mode so on this button object uh, let's head back to the script mode select and let's do another public void public void uh, race mode open close bracket open curly bracket and in fact, I'll change that to the race mode. And this will be race mode equals zero, semicolon and save. So what this will do is by default, the tracks are set as race mode. So if we select any other button, it will change it to whatever mode we want. And we just reset it back to zero if we want to stay in race mode. So now let's quickly do that. So we already have the button attached. Uh, so we choose here mode select and it is the race mode so now all those buttons work correctly so last thing we need to do 
is set everything up here so as they appear one by one. So that means more script modification. Let's go to our car select, car button right there, and track selection. Although we've got track window, what we could actually do is, although it's going to stay the same as track window, let's actually put select mode in that variable there. So when we actually click one of these cars, this will appear when we turn it off. So let's quickly try that out. So if we select a car, that's when our race mode appears. So then let's modify those buttons to make the track selection appear. So in mode select, script, public, game, object, track, select, semicolon. And then whenever we set our mode, track, select, <clears throat> dot set active true and then that line of code can be copied into each method and save and then yes guys you've guessed it now we just need to set that in the correct buttons so on score button down here button object we just need to have track select drag it over here and disable track select up here save the scene so let's press play and let's select our car, race mode, track, and off we go. So, perfect. We have that whole sequence working now. So let's make our menus look a little bit nicer than what they are. I'm going to go to the main menu. And currently, we're still working with this awful default skybox. And we've already dealt with skyboxes and the asset store. And what we can do is cheat a little bit. So if we go to the Asset Store, Hold Control, press 9, we're going to use a Skybox, but there are different ways of using a Skybox theoretically, or different styles of Skybox that we can use. So if we type in Skybox, you could use a, an actual Skybox like this one here. So I'm going to click Free. However, I've, I've gone with this one right here, Fallen Skies. I've gone for this one because I just feel it gives something a little different than what a skybox would usually be. You'll see what I mean when we apply it. So again, I have no input on this whatsoever. This is just something I've chosen from the asset store because I think it looks cool. So back to our scene. And if we go to window, lighting, settings, and skybox, we can search for the skybox somewhere. If I can remember what it's called. Um, Gosh, I can't remember what it's called. But either way, you can have the skybox uh, basically displaying how you would want it to be. So let's go with evening. Cloudy crown, evening. And now, even, even though it's a skybox, it still looks a bit different. And you can apply the uh, script that we wrote to it, which rotates the skybox, if you would want to. So uh, I don't think we have. have we done that. I don't think we have, have we? Um, I think rotating the skybox is something kind of cool that we will actually look into. But basically what happens is it makes this look like it's scrolling across the screen, even though it's technically rotating. So I think what we'll do uh, next episode is we'll have a look at rotating our skybox both here and within the main level. And we'll also create a third track and we'll also start looking at unlockable tracks and cars. So just quickly before I end this tutorial, I'm actually going to go to my track select and also set that as the uh, skybox evening. In fact, I'll have midnight. Why not? Let's have a quick look how that looks. Yep, I'm happy with that. So, guys, until that next episode when we do some really cool stuff, thank you very much for watching.